Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna give you a full tutorial of the brand new Chroma Glow plugin included in Logic Pro 11 and Logic Pro for iPad version two. I'm gonna go through all of the features of Chroma Glow and explain and demonstrate what everything does so you can make the most out of this awesome new plugin. Chroma Glow is a saturation and distortion plugin that has been modeled from several different hardware units. And this isn't a software recreation of any particular hardware unit, but rather the best of multiple hardware units combined into one. Chroma Glow works great for slight saturation on instruments, vocals, and even on your final master. And it's also great for heavy saturation to breathe new life and character into your music. But before I jump into the tutorial, I've got to quickly tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Boombox. Boombox is the ultimate file storage and collaboration platform designed by music makers for music makers. If you're tired of using tools that don't cater to your needs like Google Drive and Dropbox, you've got to give Boombox a try. With Boombox, you get secure file storage, upload multi-tracks, stems, mix bounces, or even full DAW sessions. In addition to that, you get a whole plethora of collaboration tools that you won't find anywhere else. You can invite collaborators to a project where they can leave time-stamped comments and voice notes. The Sync app allows you to create a custom Boombox folder on your Mac, making it seamless to upload files directly from your desktop or hard drive. Boombox includes the vast majority of its features, even with their free plan. So why settle for less? Join Boombox today and get four gigabytes of free storage, and you can even refer a friend and get one free gig per person who signs up. Visit boombox.io and experience seamless collaboration for yourself. Okay, so I've got Chroma Glow pulled up here on this uh, electric piano track in the intro of my song. Chroma Glow, you'll find it under the distortion category. So there it is. You can load it up in stereo or dual mono. Let's go ahead and give this a listen as is without Chroma Glow on this electric piano. Yeah, really basic electric piano part. It's just the stock electric piano in Logic. Let's add Chroma Glow to the end of this and let's go through all of the main features first. So first and foremost, there are five different models that you can pick from. Retro tube is like an old school single stage vacuum tube. So this gives you warmer, even order harmonic saturation. This is really great for getting a vintage vibe. Modern tube is going to be similar to a modern triode tube. So you get more harmonic richness than the retro tube. And it also works really well in high gain settings for intentional drive and distortion effects. Magnetic mimics the saturation and compression qualities of tape machines. This is one of my favorite types of saturation. Squeeze replicates saturation achieved through the intentional pushing of a compressor. So if you push a compressor really hard, you'll start getting harmonic distortion. So this is great for adding some life and energy to your tracks. And analog preamp mimics a solid state analog preamp. So this has a distinctly sharp and edgy quality. It's also a great option for adding warmth to vocal tracks and really any recording made with a microphone and stock audio interface preamps. This can sort of impart the sound of an analog preamp on your recording. For each of these models, there are two different styles you can pick from. For most of these, it's gonna be clean and colorful. The colorful option is going to introduce more harmonic saturation, I guess, so it's gonna color the tone a bit more. So the effect is a, a bit more noticeable in the colorful setting. One other thing I want to point out here is that when you go down to the squeeze option, you have soft press and hard press. So because the squeeze model is modeled after saturation you would get from a compressor, I'm assuming this is representing two different levels of compression. So soft compression, hard press would be hard compression but it's still kind of the same as the other styles in the other models because you're gonna get more saturation with hard press than you do with soft press. <music> 
for this, I think I'm going to use the magnetic setting. I'm a huge fan of tape saturation. So this is probably my favorite model out of all of these. So here I'm using really intentional drive, noticeable distortion, just to kind of make this boring electric piano be a little more lively and have a little more character to it. Now, in addition to being able to control the amount of drive, you can also blend this into the mix. So at 0%, you're just hearing the dry signal. And then all the way up, you're hearing the full wet signal with all of the saturation in it. Kind of like parallel compression where you'd heavily compress a signal and then just blend a little bit of that compressed signal in with the dry signal. You can do the same thing here. You can do parallel saturation. So if I want really heavy saturation on the colorful setting and I want to just blend in a little bit of that, you can do that. Or dial back the drive and maybe blend in a little bit more. So we're creating a whole new character here. Now, another thing you can do is you can bypass frequencies below a certain cutoff here. So right now, frequencies with this turned on, frequencies below 120 hertz are not being distorted or saturated. And one of the key ways that I use saturation uh, with other saturation plugins, like uh, in Ozone, for example, is I'll apply more saturation to the top end than I do to the bottom end. And that kind of brings up the clarity and the detail of the track while not creating really audible, noticeable uh, distortion in the low and mid range. So you could roll this up, and this essentially is a high pass filter. So everything below a thousand hertz is no longer going to have saturation on it. So you can find that sweet spot for your instrument or a voice where you can saturate that track, but not hear that audible distortion. Now for this electric piano, I actually kind of like having a little bit of that low end distortion in there. And if you wanna go really crazy with this, you can adjust the level in and level out. So the level in adjusts the input level the output level is adjusted by level out. So if you really crank the level in, you're going to get a bunch of distortion, and then you can dial back the gain to sort of compensate for that. So if you're going for a really intentional distortion effect like that, you can certainly do that. I'm just going to tame this back a little bit. Now I've got another track down here with sort of a melody on it. I'm gonna pull up Chroma Glow on this as well. And without Chroma Glow, it sounds like this. It's running through the auto funk pedal. So it's, you know, it's quite filtered. So we're losing a lot of the top end. So we can recover some of that top end and saturate it. I'll pull up the bypass a bit. I'll use magnetic again. So I've got that top end I want, that top end saturation, but it's a little crackly, a little crispy in the top end. So this is where the filters come into play. There's two filters, a low cut and a high cut filter. Earlier, I had the high cut filter turned on. And so here, frequencies below around 4,000 hertz are being rolled off in the top end. So you can adjust the cutoff frequency of the filter. The resonance is going to affect the feedback at the cutoff frequency.
So that can give you some emphasis around the cutoff frequency. And then the slope is the shape of the roll-off slope. So if you use something lower, like 6 dB, it's going to be a more gradual roll-off. Whereas something like 48 dB per octave is going to be a really hard, steep roll-off. Now, you can also apply the filters either pre or post. So pre means that the filter is being applied before the saturation. And then post means that the filter is being applied after the saturation. So you can get a completely uh, different sound that way. And then there's a low cut filter as well. So you've got your cutoff frequency, resonance, and slope. So if I intentionally wanted to take some of that bottom end out of this lead, I could do that as well. Let's see what both of these sound like in the mix now with Chroma Glow applied. Cool. Let's try this out on our drum track. Let's uh, fatten up the drums a bit. Let's try the squeeze option for this, and I'll use soft press. Yes, yeah, so this has really given me that sort of like squashed parallel compression vibe, so I can just smash the signal. And you normally wouldn't want that, but then what you can, you can do is just blend in a little bit of it. So now the beat has some more character. It sounds more lively. We're picking up more of the ghost notes and things like that. Those sorts of things are really coming through. Uh, and likewise, I can also uh, turn on the bypass and maybe affect more of the top end than the bottom end. So you can use a little or a lot. It's completely up to you. Let's try it out on the bass here. Let's see what we can do to uh, really make this bass pop out even more than it already is. So this track already has Chroma Glow on it. And let's hear this in the mix. Yeah, maybe once again, I want to hear more of this in the top end, and I want to really saturate the top end just to make sure that every little string hit and every slap and pop is clearly heard in the mix. It's got more of like a like a woody mid-range sound, but when you pull this in, you get all of that uh, high-frequency detail in there. And as I said at the beginning of the video, this also works really well as a mastering saturator. If you use saturation plugins for mastering, you've got to be really careful how much you use and where you use it, because otherwise it can just make your master sound like it's distorted, which you don't want. You still want clarity, but you also want detail and energy, and that's what you get. You get sort of a slight lift out of it. 
Let's try out each one of these. I'm gonna use just a touch of it. Um, let's start with magnetic though. I like to roll this all the way up just to kind of hear what the full effect is and then dial it back until I don't like really notice it anymore. But the other thing I wanna do for mastering is I definitely want to only affect more of the mid range and high frequencies, usually like 1K and higher, roughly around that area. So that's 100% of the effect. We don't want that. We just wanna roll in a little bit of it. And let's try out some of these other models. Let's see which one sounds best on the master here. I'm surprised I like the, the tube sound better here than the magnetic model. Normally, when I saturate my masters, I'm almost always using tape saturation on the top end. But, um, you know, this ability to bypass the signal and only affect a certain frequency ranges is really helpful here. So let's give that one more listen. Yeah, so we're getting that last little bit of lift and energy from the Chroma Glow plugin, making the track sort of really pop. Okay, so that is the new Chroma Glow plugin in Logic Pro 11. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. I'm going to be uploading a whole bunch of new Logic 11 tutorials pretty much every day this week, so stay tuned for those. As always, thank you so much for the support, and thanks for watching.